Welcome to part 7 of the 755 Followed Me Home project. If you missed what brought us here, links to the previous videos are posted below. Well, it looks like Sandy brought something by this morning. I don't suppose there's some Krispy Kreme donuts in there to go with my coffee. Let's see what's there. Oh, much better. Looks like we might have a piston set. Good news and bad news usually come together. The bad news, of course, would be that there aren't any Krispy Kreme donuts in there, but the good news is that here's a piston set, piston and rings with the rings installed. As the camera gets focused, we can see the piston is marked OS, oversized 50 or 0.5 millimeters, or 20 thousandths for the rest of us. Well, the job now is to forget about Krispy Kreme donuts and get some machining going. With new pistons in hand, it's time to take the block to Zach's and have it made ready to receive them. We're going, so we'll go from this point and see where we're at, and then we'll go 180 degrees from that and tell us where we need to move the machine to center it. This lever locks the table down so nothing moves. And you think you're ready? chamfered the bottom of the cylinders so as the piston goes back up the hole that square edge doesn't scrape the oil off the skirt. Uh, we need the caps because we're going to plant bars through the mains to hold it down in the hole. Thank you. 
is, that means the hone's at the very bottom of the cylinder. This is a pressure readout as to how hard it's forcing on the stones, so we can tell if the bottom's small or big compared to the top as it's honing. Now it's all roughed in. We're within uh, about a thousandth of being finished. That was with our core stones. They're about 180 grit. Got two of them. We're going to take them out and put the 320 stones in to finish honing it. right down a little bit. do anything with it? Was I having a head gasket issue before? Mm-hmm. I recommend we do. Uh, so we can pull the pins out and we just deck it off. Uh, it'll probably clean up in four or five thousandths. But that way you know you've got a good flat surface to, to work from so you're not fighting head gaskets down the road. Okay. Well, a lot of people don't understand why machining costs. It's time. A lot of time. So we'll spin this at 1200 RPM. And it's just a few thousandths of this cutter that's going by and cutting it. But that's a $300 cutter. Granted, you can, if it chips, you can turn it and get back to a new surface. But you can't do that forever. No. So what I always do is I bring it down and zero out my gauge in the middle. And then we can check it back. It's maybe a ten thousandth off or so. And check it over here. It's a thousandth high, so it's probably going to be a thousandth high on this side all along. So we go down. Check it in the middle. They're basically exactly the same there. They're a thousandth there. So from the factory, they probably milled it just a little out of square. So we're a thousand and a half. 
there. And just pushing on this changes it. So you gotta meet it where you want it and take your hand off. So it's it's pretty flat. It's actually really good. And you put it around and you bring it down until it will touch the cylinder or the top of the floor. There it touched. So back it back up where it's barely skimming it. Right. Touched there, so we'll bring our bring our gauge down. But that little bitty shiny streak right there is where it touched. So we'll go along a few spots and make sure it's not going to beat on it. And then I'll cut it. Turn where we only are going to cut one direction. Let's cut dry. Mm -hmm. On the very last pass, we'll squirt some W40 on it just to. But the first pass, we're just going to kind of see where it's at. We're going to half. Basically, by the head bolts on this side, and that was a half thousand. So we had took off a half, and now we're at one and a half. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. Carving the holder up there. there. Uh, Get me some focus going.
stuff's been tapped around on. It has some little boogers on it. Stuff's been tapped around on. It's about 3,000 slow in the middle, so it's got a curve to it, but it's mainly on the back side. You only need to move it about that much to get a new surface. And this little finger is all that holds that puck on there. So probably three or maybe four more turns worth of cutting. You gotta get all the goody out of it for what they cost. pretty close and then hold it put down pressure on it and if we have to change the puck midway like if you make a pass and you can hear it you do it enough it changes sounds it's it's not a it's more of like a thud than a cut I don't drop it back down I, I change it and I run it and if it cuts I change my gauge to match Front and back here, front and back here, then just skimming your ejector cups. This is our second pass, so we're down a hair over a thousandth and a half. And you basically are cleaning up a quarter here and a quarter here, and you're starting to catch in the middle there just a little bit. You cleaned up this whole injector cup. This one's not quite cleaned up. We're sneaking up on it, so we'll take another thousand off. That will be three thousand soon. The manual states that standard cylinder head flatness is two thousandths or less with a wear or distortion limit of six thousandths. The facing machine measured three thousandths with a bow to the middle. The book also states that no more than eight thousandths is to be removed. As you'll see, pitting in the midsection around cooling holes near the combustion chamber made us curl our toes as we kept going for one more pass. There's another. Ultimately, six and a half thousandths was removed, reducing the piston to head clearance by a total of ten thousandths. More on that later. To check valve recession in the head, I flattened a ten mil piece of sixty thousandths electrical solder and miked the thickness. The intake valve was fine at thirty-three thousandths, which is thirteen over minimum, but the exhaust at twenty-eight thousandths is five thousandths under the factory minimum of thirty-three. So let's wrap this number seven up like a zoom call. In the beginning, I assumed this engine was junk. As disassembly progressed, I looked ahead. For example, did I want to do the valves before knowing if the head could be made flat? No. So what's the next step now? Episode eight will focus on confirming the piston to head clearance and what can be done about the less than appropriate valve recession. I have a plan.